Good afternoon and happy Wednesday. This is Abby with the Fairport Public Library and I've got another craft for you today. Today we're making trivets. Now I know I bring those up a lot and I say you can use this technique to make trivets. You can use this technique to make trivets. Well, I'm not using any of those techniques and I'm doing a totally new one to work on them with you today. So let's get started. Here's what we're gonna need for today's craft. Some cork, some pre-made templates, a pair of scissors, an X-Acto knife, and optionally, a paintbrush and some paint. All right, so here's our template. I went on to Google Image and I searched leaf and I found this beautiful big leaf that I thought would be good for a trivet because it had a lot of surface space. So then I put that, copy pasted it, put it in Word, and then I made a version of it that is just slightly smaller. You can see that if I put it over it, you can see that other outline. It's just slightly small, smaller. So what we're gonna do for this one is we're just gonna cut out the full shape. And for this one, I'm gonna cut around the shape, but then I'm gonna cut on each line and make little individual squares. So let's see how that works. All right, so there we go. Full shape, little shapes. Okay, now we're gonna get to uh, the cork. Now I've got two types of cork, one thick one, one really thin one. So I'm gonna use the thick cork to uh, do this outline here. Cause I want it to be a little thicker on the bottom, protecting the surface that I'm trying to get the heated object away from. Probably should have pre-unwrapped these, but you're getting a part of every process this time. Got these corks at Michael's. Um, there are a few options. You can get mats too if you don't wanna roll. Um, I'm a little worried about these rolls lying flat, but I know eventually they will. Um, especially if I re-roll them the other way. Little trick which people who have ever bought a carpet or a poster board have probably already learned on their own. Just re-roll it back the other way. And if you're doing this in advance, unlike me who did not, um, you can lay this overnight, maybe tape it, and uh, it will hopefully lay more flat. All right, so I'm gonna take my pieces, I'm gonna put them off to the side. I'm gonna take my big leaf. All right. So there are two ways you can do this. You could put a pencil outline on it or you could tape it down to the cork and just cut it out that way. I'm gonna pause this for a second so I can choose which one I'm gonna do. I chose to tape. As you can see, I put some tape on there. Um, so what I'm gonna start by doing is cutting a basic outline. This cork is definitely thin enough that it can easily cut. So you don't have to worry about that. But all right, so I've got this and I'm just gonna do an outline. Cut along the edge. And you're gonna wanna do it like meeting at, at sides. So like, the tape starts coming up, push it back down. Take your time on this. It is not a rush for this guy. You don't wanna cut all the places with tape off first because then the pattern will just be floating willy nilly. So I made sure I added tape in multiple areas so that it wouldn't just be floating. You don't have to worry about your template. If you cut a little on edge, that's fine. Um, you're not gonna be using this template again unless you make another one, and then you know what? It doesn't really matter, because it's not, the rough edges of your template are not gonna show on your actual trivet. Put it down. Now I have the X-Acto knife just in case this cork was really hard to cut, but since it turned out being pretty easy to cut, I'm just using my scissors. Um, if you were doing a more intricate leaf, which I'm gonna try to do uh, off camera eventually, 
um, you might want to use the X-Acto knife, but because I didn't get the mats and I got the flat um, cork, I didn't need an X-Acto knife to cut it. I could just do it with my scissors. So there we go. It's still a little foldy, so I'm going to attempt to fix that, but there you go. There's the basic shape. Now we'll move on to the next part. I'm going to briefly interrupt this craft to bring you the optional portion, um, it, which is to paint the big bottom layer of your leaf. I'm going to do it now so that it has time to dry while I'm working on the next part. But yeah, it's just, so it's to give contrast because the cork we're going to be putting above it is going to be the same color, which you can prevent yourself by getting corks of different colors. And then you don't have to add paint into the mix. Um, but since I couldn't find corks of different colors, I am adding paint into the mix. So I'm just taking um, that big one we just cut out and I'm giving it a good layer of red paint so that it'll look like a fall leaf when I put the other parts on top of it. So I'm gonna just do that for this whole leaf and then I'm gonna set it aside to dry. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. All right, so I had a little bit of a change of plans. So I was gonna use the thinner cork to do the other leaf pieces, but I had like the perfect amount of scraps from the first one. And honestly, like, why waste it? So I'm gonna use this and I've taped them down to the extra bits of cork and I'm just gonna cut out these pieces. It's gonna be almost simpler than the leaf because there's no round edges on this guy except for the base bits. Um, and it'll be just super easy to cut them out. So I'm going to do that on all of these pieces. I'll be honest, right now, Critical Abby's looking at this and saying, wow, you made the wrong colored spade and a bunch of scrap. But hang in there, Critical Abby, and hang in there, all of you watching at home, because I swear it's going to come together. Well, I hope it does. I did forget to tell you one thing that you're gonna need, which is a glue gun. Um, we're gonna use that to attach these pieces on. So I've got a couple pieces that still have some tape on there. I'm gonna take that off and then I'm gonna lay this out before I, uh, before I get going. All right, so that, and that. Now the red background's making sense, right? Well, I hope the red background is now making sense. There we go. I'm trying to lay it out so that the seams line up as best as they can. How does this fit, you guys? How does this fit? This part in the middle, like that. There we go. All right, so that is what it's gonna look like when it's done. And I just have to, you know, like get all the hot glue ready. So I'm trying to think, maybe I'll do a side at a time um, so as not to fully overdo it for myself. Hot glue is almost ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bead around the outside of the piece I'm attaching so that it holds those sides down. And then I come in and just press it down until it dries. Now there are gonna be strings on this. There's always strings on anything when you use the hot glue gun, but 
You can pick them off as you go, or you can pick them off at the end, whatever you prefer. So I'm trying to run them up along an invisible uh, stem that I've got going through the middle of it. Whoa, y'all almost went down. Sorry about that, especially if you get motion sickness. I would totally try to record, re-record all of this, but I can't like rip them off after I've started putting them down. <laughs> that would be confusing and would not have good continuity for all of you. <laughs> so, now if you want and you want bigger veins through here, you can always trim your pieces down. It's not an exact science. I'm just trying really hard to get this seam to be as spot on as possible. Now this is all just you fighting against the perfectionist inside of you, which is my daily life, so. Welcome. There we go, there's one side, so I'm going to do the second side. And there we go. We've got a finished trivet, and as you can see, as we've worked on it, it has um, flattened out a bit, and it is ready to hold hot things. Now guys, we made it through this tutorial. It was probably the hardest one yet. I knocked the camera over, I wasn't prepared, I hadn't opened the cork beforehand, you know, that's just the place I'm in right now during quarantine. But we did it, and we have a trivet. You know, next time in hot water, I'll have a place to put it because I have a trivet. So thanks for bearing with me on this one. We did it, we made it through. There you go, we did it. Whew, thanks for sticking with me on that one. It was a little bit rougher than my normal ones, but that's how I'm feeling these days. So I hope you still had fun and made a beautiful trivet. I think it came out really great. It's pretty big, so it can do a lot of protecting. I made a couple other ones just to show you some variety. I made a maple leaf and I did a yellow background. This is a little bit smaller, would work for like um, a smaller casserole dish. And then just to show that it's not just for fall, I made a tropical leaf trivet as well. So for this one, I used the thinner cork on the top because it was easier for me to cut with an X-Acto knife so I could get the little circles and all that kind of good stuff. So I hope you had fun. I hope you make these. Please share them with me if you do. And either way, I will see you next Wednesday with another craft.